Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and today we're going to be talking about quite the interesting archetype. I, I guess I say that all the time, but this one's actually very interesting for a multitude of reasons. Today we're going to be talking about the Artillerists, or if you want it put in more layman's terms, the Siege Weapon Operator is kind of the best way to think of what this character is actually like. Because artillerists can be a lot of different things, actually. Artillery is a very broad term as far as weapons are concerned. But in Pathfinder 2E, it mostly refers to people who operate siege weapons. But before we get into that, I just wanted to ask you all to please, if you enjoyed the video, please leave at least a like. If you want to see more, though, subscribe. And if you're interested, join our Discord linked in the description down below where we talk all things tabletop, including things like Warhammer 40k, as well as you can possibly uh get to play with me and my friends as i always recruit there first for any of the games i play on the channel especially the games that we check out at the end of every month recently we just got done with vampire the masquerade and that was a very fun system and i really can't wait for what we're going to do in next week so that poll will be coming up pretty soon but enough shilling out just wanted to get that done try not to get so beat up over it <laughs> it's just I hate asking, but you know, it is what it is. It's the market. Anyway, let's talk about the artillerist. So the artillerist dedication is very interesting. Now, this is a strange one because I would say this does not work on player characters as much as this does on NPCs. If you're a group that has the ability to kind of raise an NPC up, as some groups do, this is great if you have any need for an artillerist. If you have a base to defend, or if you're on some kind of air slash pirate ship, all that kind of stuff, this is a really good NPC job to have. And uh, if you're a GM, this is really good if you're providing NPCs for your players to kind of operate the various siege weapons of their keep or whatever this is really great to do as well but if you're a player dedicated to the art of artillery or you just want this kind of as a part of your character's backstory that helps out and who knows you might be playing in a game that has a lot of you know opportunities to use siege weapons any ocean-based game where you're on like a pirate ship or airship even can really do this, or defending base. Base defense needs to happen in more tabletop games. I think base defense is really, really fun, and I think it's one of those things that a lot of games just don't really capitalize on, and Pathfinder 2E especially has a lot of really good rules for something like this, especially when it comes to trap dedications and all kinds of stuff. But let's look at the actual dedication itself to see what it can maybe provide for you and your character. So the dedication itself more or less translates to you're so good you can give your crew a bonus to their aim, reload, whatever checks they need besides strike checks. Strike checks are typically only for portable siege weapons as well. And if you're unfamiliar with siege weapons, this plus two circumstance bonus is pretty good. Mostly it's for loading the weapon you'll need like an athletics check to load the weapon and that's usually for like heavy ammo cannonballs all that kind of stuff and it's usually a dc 20. this is really good to give to your crew to help them load up the weapon and not only that this can be used in case there's any kind of situation where you might need to make a check for instance if you're moving your weapon uphill for instance if it's an actual movable uh, siege weapon Obviously, an athletics check will probably come in for that, as well as, you know, I don't even think it applies for any saves you might have to make. Nope, just load, aim, move, or repair. Repair is actually really, really good. The repair action standard. And not only that, you provide this to the whole crew. In fact, if you're using a character who has the hireling manager uh, general feat, this is really good because it gives you a slightly higher circumstance bonus i believe and let me double check here real quick hireling manager i believe gives a plus one circumstance bonus to checks let me double check if you could even improve on that it would not be a very big improvement but it would still be an improvement uh hireling manager nope it's plus two to skill checks 
Is it a status? Nope. Circumstance bonus to all skill checks. So, I don't know. I guess it's good for a dedication and you don't have to use one of your general feats to do so. So overall, it's not bad. And not only that, but when you dedicate actions to aiming the weapon, you can move the weapon twice as far for aiming purposes. This is actually quite huge because most weapons have like a 40 foot, you know, distance that they can move 30 feet, whatever. Doubling that makes it so you might only have to move your weapon one range distance in order to actually do it. So it's actually pretty solid. I think it's really, really good. Named Artillery is a very interesting feat. I like it. You, you essentially designate a named cannon, ballista, whatever, old Bessie, you know, that kind of stuff. You, you designate it and you spend an hour of your day uh, attending to it, tuning it up or whatever, and it helps the weapon. It increases its AC and its uh, fortitude and reflex saves by plus two circumstance, as well as an additional uh, hit points equal to twice your level. This is really good if you have a lot of siege weapon and siege weapon. Again, this is solid on like airships and, and you know, pirate ships, ba uh, battleships, all that kind of stuff like that. Th these kind of bonuses are really good. It is strange to me that siege weapons have a fort save and reflex save. I guess it's just to minimize how much damage these things could take so they don't get instantly wiped out. But at the same time, it does feel silly to me that you could do anything reflex based when it comes to like a siege weapon itself. Overall, pretty good. Uh, you can only have one named weapon or, or each siege weapon can only be named by one artillerist. So if you have a bunch of artillerists on the crew, for instance, uh, only one of them gets to designate. Overall, pretty good. It's got some good bonuses. It makes your siege weapon essentially hardier, but uh I don't think this one's as necessary unless you're doing constant like ship to ship style battles. I think everything else, it really doesn't apply too much. But who knows? Again, this might be perfect for your game. Shorthanded is actually really, really, really good. Uh, normally, each siege weapon has a minimum crew size, typically two, uh, oftentimes three and a maximum size up to like six or eight. I think one weapon has eight crew as a maximum size or maybe even a minimum size, I don't even know. Uh, but in any case, this one's really, really good because there are some siege weapons that only require two or three people. And shorthanded, essentially what it does is for each crew member missing, you suffer a minus two circumstance penalty on checks to reload, aim, load the weapon, all that kind of stuff. If you're a higher level character, you can operate something like a ballista by yourself. Granted, you're going to be taking all your actions and you're not going to be firing it as much to do so, but it's still possible. And siege weapons do a fair amount of damage, honestly, and depending on how souped up it is, there is some potential there. This is really good if you need to suddenly operate a gun by yourself maybe some of your crew gets injured and you still need to continue on the battle this one i would recommend picking up at least as some of your feats for artillerists just because i think it'll provide you more opportunities to use some siege weapons even if you just so happened upon them oh yes and i almost forgot to mention as well you can replace up to five crew members this way so most siege weapons you can actually operate by yourself granted each additional crewmate is minus two so five crewmates is a minus 10 on some checks that you might have to make which is really really rough but if you're like a level 15 character it is still quite possible to make those checks so something i thought was really interesting and something again that makes shorthand really really awesome Cannon corner shot is actually really interesting. It really gets into the intricacies of what makes siege weapons work. Some siege weapons have a burst area and some have a line where it shoots like a gout of flame or something. You know how to adjust the ammo to change how some siege weapons even fire. So if your siege weapon is a line uh, a line firing type siege weapon, you can pack it up and, and make it so that it can fire a burst instead at about half the distance of the line. So if the line is a 20 foot line, it becomes a 10 foot burst. 
and the opposite. If you have a weapon that creates 10 foot bursts, you can make it so it shoots a 20 foot line. This is overall pretty interesting, pretty satisfying. Not only that, but some of the burst weapons have a minimum range that they can fire from. And even though it does take an additional load action to set up this different type of ammo, and most guns have a two load action. So it's a kind of almost a full round to get the weapon all nice and loaded up but this can make it so that even your more long range weapons might be able to fire in close range with like a gout of flame or you know combustible uh, black powder if you set it up appropriately i think this is really good again this is i don't think in the purview of most games but i do like the flexibility with some of the firing you can make with your cannons and it makes your character feel badass you just find some way to to change how a cannon even fires i think that's really cool field artillery is a really good action so what happens is essentially you on an adjacent sieged weapon you grease the wheels you do something and you make it move faster for a full round so until the next time your turn starts again essentially those weapons will get a higher movement speed so when the crew is pushing moving it does have to be i believe a mounted siege weapon uh yeah mounted siege weapon so not one of the portable ones like the portable ram but still this is really really good and moving a siege weapon can be incredibly important to make sure that your weapons are in line of fire overall pretty good pretty standard this is more for like if you're sieging a castle for whatever reason and you need to move to different target sites or you need to move out of like a conflagration area or something like that <sighs> live ammunition this is this, I think, is the most viable feat in all of the artillerists as, as far as standard play is concerned. Because, of course, they make it where you can fire characters out of a weapon. Now, it also works on restrained or unconscious enemies as well, which I think is a little messed up, but very interesting. Essentially, you have to load, you have to load it for two more load actions than normal, which means that it's pretty typically four load actions we got split it between two turns more or less it's pretty rough but you can fire a character out of the cannon and uh when the character's loaded in and fired out uh they strike a single five foot square even if the weapon is standardly a burst like from a cannon and any targets in that area take this cannon's normal damage including the character you fire. So I hope whoever you put in that cannon's pretty durable because they're going to take some damage. Now, one thing I wanted to mention as well, let me read it word for word here so there's no confusion. When you launch the weapon, the weapon usually targets an area. You target a single five foot square instead. The siege weapon deals its normal damage to its target or to the modified area and to the creature fired. Now, a siege weapon normally has a save to, you know, save to do whatever. And this is for even mounted siege weapons. Yeah, it, uh, there's nothing saying it can't be for, like, the, uh, like the portable ones. So, it, it, the, the weapon does have to actually be able to fire. So, it can't be something like a ballista or the hacha you know, like arrow cannon that shoots a lot of large arrows. Can't be anything like that, but, you know, cannons, catapults, anything that doesn't require very specific, you know, non-creature-sized ammunition can be used in this way. I technically, by the rules, the character that's fired still gets to make a reflex save to possibly reduce or even negate the damage. Rules is written. I mean, you can argue with it either way. I don't think that's the case, but that's just how it is in the book. I would say that the character is going to take the damage as if they failed the check. Not crit failed, so, you know, they don't take uber damage. But I do say it's an automatic failure for the character you're firing because that's the only thing that really makes sense. In any regard, a lot of player characters who you might fire out of the cannon might have more than enough health to even survive it. Could be even a champion who would just lay on hands himself and heal most of the damage anyway. So, you know, there's still a lot of ridiculousness that can come with the artillerist. 
But uh, yeah, living ammunition is very, very interesting. And I'm sure there's all kinds of player hijinks. And it's nice to have an actual rule that even if you're improving it off uh, for a character who doesn't have the feet, the GM at least can refer to this on seeing how it would actually work. Master Siege Engineer is the last feat in Artillerus, and it works really, really good. I think this also pairs really well with the one-man crew ballista idea I had earlier. A century, more or less, you become permanently quickened, and uh, with this quickened action, you can either aim or launch the weapon. Now, the ballista, being my example here, has a two-load action, one action to aim. Normally, you can't fire it in the same round, but with this action, you can load it up, aim and as long as the target is close enough to where you can aim from which if you have the art the dedication feat itself you can move it twice the distance you can launch it with your quickened action allowing you to fire a ballist a siege weapon essentially once per round this is amazing this is really really good and at an only minus two to the checks to even do so it doesn't even affect actually the launching of the weapon though actually you know i'm not even going to get into that it's going to get into the rules of how siege weapons work in general all you need to know is this is really good. It can make operating a ballista once per round and firing a ballista once per round actually pretty viable. And with that, that pretty much wraps up the artillerist dedication. Again, not something I would recommend for most player characters as it's not very applicable in most situations. Now, it would be good if you're using it as a part of your background. It gives your character the ability to do so. If you have a campaign that has maybe a, a, a ship, pirate ship, battleship, or an airship of some kind, this is really good. Hell, if you have some kind of base defense, this is really good to have at least in your pocket so that you can do some other stuff. And you don't need to pick up all the feats from Artillerist. I think there's a solid three feet pick that anyone could find in the dedication. You know, the dedication itself and two other feats. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot that really work with the Artillerist and you can be pretty flexible with it. But as if you're a GM, this is absolutely amazing for your NPCs to have if you want to give them a little bit more oomph, a little bit more flavor and to make them a little bit better than your standard, like, you know, a uh, mook or NPC style minion, more or less. So overall, Artillerist, I think, is really cool. Maybe not applicable in most campaigns, but when it is applicable, I think it's really, really good. And honestly, Artillerist is just a lot of fun. It's got a lot of good themes, and it can really flesh your character out, especially if you're something like the Inventor as well. So I think this is a really, really, really good archetype dedication overall. But please, let me know what you all think. Have you used this one before? Do you plan on using it? Do you have an interesting build for it? I would like to hear it down below. And one more time, I'd just like to remind y'all, if you've enjoyed please like and if you want to see more of this subscribe so i know that people actually are looking out for this content and we're gonna go ahead and end it here so good luck with your games leave the bad luck to me and i'll catch you all next time bye